How you doing? You're watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck. Thank you for watching the show. You could be watching any show in the world, but we're grateful, thankful, and humble that you uh, decide to watch us. Um, we just give honor and praise to the Lord for you tuning in today. We ask that uh, you continue to be in prayer for us as we pray for you. Uh, today is a very special day for me. Um, it's a day that I've never seen before. I don't know if you saw it before, but I've never seen this day before. And it's been a blessing after blessing after blessing. I had a new job interview today. Uh, I did a new painting today. Um, I saw a sunrise today that I've never seen that sunrise before. I saw some dolphins on the ocean. I, I had a chance to shake some hands with people who I had never met before. So every morning is new blessings, morning by morning. And so a few weeks ago, I was walking through the studio and I was talking to uh, one of our colleagues here at the studio. And she says, there's a guy that I need you to meet. And I'm like, ah, I'm tired of you. You're always telling me that I gotta meet this new guy, new guy. Who is this new person? Uh, and she says, yeah, Brother Dean, you gotta meet Brother Dean. He's, so, he's such a great guy. I was like, okay, well, I'll get around to it. Let me, put it, let me take out my pencil, I'll put him on the schedule and, and have him send me some stuff. And I got, the, I got this young man's bio, and the more I read it, I was like, oh, I need to get this guy on the show like today. Do well, you know, so I get some more schedule time? Mm -hmm. And so we, we were able to um, connect and meet and, and to meet one another and to understand that we're, we're both doing the same ministry, just on, the, on different streets. Same ministry, different streets. And so I'm so grateful uh, today to have, uh, I, I'm gonna say, um, Brother Dean. Brother Dean, how are you doing? I'm doing good, brother. <laughs> okay. Good to be here. Good. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah. When I when I started reading your bio, there's so many layers to you, uh, and then and then just a few short minutes ago, I uh, I had an opportunity to meet someone, <laughs> who is I I think she's a, a jewel in your life. Um, t t let me just start there. Tell me a little something about <laughs> about your wife. To just go there. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife, Susan. Uh, <laughs> We were Westmont students, Mercy. and she was in the room above me. Wow! And we would hear the the pounding of the step aerobics, <laughs> so I knew I need to look into it. <laughs> so I did. I found her, wow. and we've been married 22 years. 22 years, and wow. we have five children. And wow. she's a great wow. friend yeah. to me, and she's a great wow. mother. Wow! And she's Ooh. got a great heart. Yeah, wow. I love her. Wow. So I, I was sharing with a friend of mine just the other day, and she says, Chuck, why did you marry your wife? And I said, because I knew she would be a great mother to my children. Hmm. That was, the other, all the other stuff I don't really care about, but is this person capable of being a good mother to my mm -hmm. children? And she has been that and more. And so yeah. when you said that, that made, that reaches out, that, 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 that echoes to me. The same things I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. You want to? Yeah, everybody. You're a guy. You like this cute person to be with you. Right. I, I get all that. You know, can she cook a lasagna? Oh, I get all that, right? <laughs> but will she be a good mother to my children? I think that's. that's yeah, the, yeah, and you know, when you, when your life's an adventure and it's long mm -hmm. and you don't know what you're getting into, right? You don't right, know what right. the, the the road's going to look like. Right, right. And here I am, you know, a 19 year old kid, and yeah. she's 18. I think when we met and. And and so it's by the grace of God, I think, when you're when you're yeah. locked up yeah. together, because yeah. then you know that's your partner, right. and she's been a great partner. Right. But you know, we've we've been right. some, through some twists and turns and wow. hills and valleys, and <laughs> and I got the right partner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very grateful. And you tell her that every morning, right? Well, or, I, or she reminds you. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I need to tell her more. <laughs> right. right now, I'm telling her. <laughs> <laughs> look at the, look into yeah. the say it, say, say it again, because yeah, you because you, you got to go home tonight, yeah, right? That's right. That's right. I'm going that's, home. That's, that's amazing. Right. I uh, there, there's a certain bond. Uh, if 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 you guys that are watching the show, if you don't if you don't know this, um, and 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 you haven't had the opportunity to meet that right uh, person uh, to love you enough to love you in spite of self. Um, that's an amazing person. And so if there's someone that loves you, other than mom, you know, moms, they love you, don't care what you do. But anybody outside of the mom circle that loves you, no matter who or what you are, that's a special person. And be sure and thank them every, mm. every day. Brother Dean, um, I, I have, so once again, your, your, your bio was just, it blew me away. It's like a, a, a war and peace novel. There was just so much stuff in there. Um, but what, so you love the Lord. 
I do. You do. I do. Right, let me start there. <laughs> Thankfully, he loves yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. When, did, when did you meet the Lord? When? What time, date? How did you know? You know? I, I, I asked Jesus to come into my heart when I was seven years old on the bunk beds. I was, wow. I'm a pastor's son. Wow. And, and I met the Lord through my parents and mm -hmm. in that environment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, a, it's been a journey and a, um, an adventure getting to know him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's, he's stuck with me for, what's that, 37 years since. But I, I have to say, I, I first accepted him at seven. And I remember just being, as a, as a young person, mm -hmm. I always believed. Mm -hmm. I never, I never, I always believed mm -hmm. in God. Mm -hmm. what, what's changed is learning the depth of his love, mm -hmm. learning the truth about grace and mercy and all the things that we can find in God, hope mm -hmm. and overcoming and w what it's like to be broken and at your worst moment and how he, how he responds. Yeah. So I feel like I've gotten to know him yeah. over many years and I'm still getting to know him. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of like, you know, I was at the Washington Monument with my kids and we were mm -hmm. driving and the Washington Monument, you know, the closer you get, the bigger it gets. Uh, yeah. And I feel like that's kind of the way it is with God is you know, the closer I get to him, the bigger he is. And so it's it's an ongoing thing. But I first accepted Jesus into my heart on the bunk beds. At seven. I'm going to write that down. The, the closer I get, the, the bigger, bigger he is. He is. Wow. Yeah. And the more loving, yeah. you know, the more yeah. kind. Yeah. It's like a good friend, yeah. you know, and that's been my experience. He's really good all the time. <laughs> You're going to make me cry already, okay? So sometimes I try to be, you guys know, I try to be macho Chuck on the show, but, you know, when I, when I have a special guest uh, that really just squeezes the heart, you know, and you're a heart squeezer, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And we've, known, we've, we've only known each other for a short period of time. Yeah. But you, you are what I call a heart squeezer, right? Because yeah, right. that, that helps you get to the true, um, the true person. And I think a lot of times we do the superficial reality yeah. thing you never really get to know a person you never really get yeah but we've been but you're a, you're a heart squeezer <laughs> so thank well, you for that you're right? my newest friend <laughs> that's so amazing we right? yeah we there just came to friends when uh, sister courtney told me that i had to meet you i like well everybody says you got to meet this guy you got to meet this guy <laughs> like, what are you talking about you got to meet this guy well, who is he what was it what was, what, is he that special i mean what does he do you know does he have gold flakes coming out of his ears i don't know um but i trusted her you yeah. know Sister Courtney said, you have to meet this young man. And I'm like, okay. And I think sometimes, and, and I've been doing, I've been preaching this series for uh, some time about uh, divine appointments. Yeah. You know, there are certain people that cross your path at certain times in life, like the TV, the, the, the TVSB studio crew crossed my life yeah. at a certain path. And we met, and then I can't tell you how many people that I've touched because I'm affiliated with this organization, yeah. TVSB. Yeah. And then when Sister Courtney Frazier said, you need to meet Brother Dean, I'm like, okay. And, and you know, when, when someone you trust tells you to do something, you, blind faith, you just, you just do it. And so, and so I'm so grateful. But you're, you're involved in so many things. You, have a, uh, you work with a, a, a couple of organizations and a few foundations. Yeah. Share, share with just, just a little bit about, about those. Yeah. Um, well, I'm the executive director of Christian Legal Aid of Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. an organization that mm -hmm. provides legal uh, access to attorneys for mm -hmm. people that can't afford it. Mm -hmm. um, for the last 20 plus years, I've been involved with the Turner Foundation, which mm -hmm. is uh, my grandfather, Albert Turner, was a was born in Northern Ireland, mm -hmm. came to the United States. He was a traveling French uh, uh, tent preacher. Mm. So wow. he, he was he was a, he was a tent preacher, mm -hmm. and then ended up in Southern California and started a foundation to do affordable housing. And he saw it as a way to minister and wow. care for people. Yeah. So I grew up going to that property and seeing how he cared for low-income senior citizens by providing housing and lots of other stuff. Um, and it was an, it was a, it was a neat ministry that he had mm -hmm. there, and I think it kind of you know stuck in my blood. And yeah. so now we're the Turner Foundation, which we renamed after him, is now six, in our sixty first 
year. Sixty first. Sixty first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know the the goal is to make life better for for people, um, mm -hmm. primarily through housing. We own apartments, mm -hmm. but any way we can make life better for people is that's what we want to do. So those are the two things that I'm primarily involved in. Let, let me stop you right there because I, I want I want the world who's watching right now. Um, if if someone out there, somebody that had uh, two dollars more than they needed, and they wanted to donate to your mission, where would they send it? <laughs> well, they'd go probably go to the TurnerFoundation.com. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we we are all, are really excited about lots of different ways to serve mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. and we're really actually in the next. 12 months, mm -hmm. we're really broadening and expanding our mission. Mm -hmm. And so things like a college scholarship fund, we want to we want to be able to send some people to college that mm. might be the first generation to do that. Mm -hmm. um, there's kids programs going on all the time in music and art. And so there's lots of ways dollars can be used, mm -hmm. but also volunteers. Volunteers too, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And where would they look? Where would they go? Where would they go yeah, to? Go to the TurnerFoundation.com uh -huh. uh -huh. and uh -huh. you can see, I mean, when we, so in 2005, we bought this apartment complex on the west side. Okay. It was called Casa Perdido. Okay. Which I think means lost home or mm -hmm. home for the lost. What's the address? Two. Or can we give that? It's on Canon Perdido. I'm five, <laughs> some, five hundred okay. something. Okay. But it's on the, on yeah, the west on the side. On the west side, uh huh. So when we, in so Oscar's it, district. Oscar Gutierrez. I district. believe so. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's seven. It was. It, was yeah. se it is seventy units. Okay. Wow. So when we bought it, it was full of darkness. Mm. Is the easiest way to describe it. It was drug infested, a lot of gangs, violence, but it also just despair. You know how there's a, there was a kind of an overarching yeah. sense of darkness. Yeah. Darkness. Like cloud. Yeah. yeah. And and so we. I walked all seventy units actually before we, we closed. Praise God. And, Praise God. Um, and it was thick, you know. It was you could feel it. Wow. You could feel it. You know, yeah. chicken bones and writings on the wall, and and just mm. conditions that you know, I wasn't used to seeing, you know, in the United States. Which is, yeah. yeah. so we it, we took dominion for the kingdom of God, and we prayed and Take we walked. And we took wow. it, yeah. and yeah. we had lots of friends come in with us, and they said, "Don't paint it. They'll graffiti it." We painted it. Don't plant flowers, they'll trample them. We planted flowers. We opened up a community center. Yeah. And we started to bring all this, as many good gifts to the people that, as we could. What do my kids get? Mm -hmm. Music and art, tutoring yeah. and after school programs, safety, yeah. paint, appliances that work, screens on the windows, dignity, a sense wow. of order. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and all of a sudden, what happened was the, it changed. And that's the thing about Ooh. the kingdom of God, Pastor, Ooh. and you know this. We can change environments. Ooh. Yes, sir. Because we have the power. Yes, sir. Don't we? Yes, sir. So the darkness, it seems like the darkness wow. is winning when, you, yeah. when you're in this world, yeah. especially all the division and just, yeah. we have the power. And so we went into a dark place and we said, not anymore. Yes, sir. And it changed. Yeah, yeah. And crime yeah. went down dramatically. Yeah. 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 And all these good things start to happen and yes. a sense of communities built. People are actually not just isolated in their apartments, they're coming out. Mm. Kids are involved, kids are getting better grades, attending school. So that's mm. the kind of thing that can happen when the Thriving. kingdom of God mm. infiltrates a dark place. Amen. And we say, we're not, we're gonna change the environment. Wow. And we have to do it together, mm. and you have to be patient, and it's messy and all that, all that. Yeah. But it's good, yeah. and it's victory. Dirty work. When you do dirty work, you're going to get some mud on your boots. That's right. <laughs> right? And, and, and the enemy does like it. Yeah, yeah, and guess what? Yeah, Who cares? Yeah, Who cares? Yeah. How about that? Yeah, you're not here for them. No. Yeah, you're, we're, we're, you're for the people. Yeah, yeah. and I think Amen. Jesus went to places that a lot of other people didn't go. Yeah. And he wasn't afraid. You know, that's an interesting part about him is he yeah. wasn't afraid. He was yeah. pretty clear about his mission. Yeah. That's yeah. how I want to be. Yeah. I mean, I think that you're the same way. We, yeah. I mean, I want to be clear about what does he want me to do? Where does he want us to go? And fear should not enter into the equation. Um, some, somewhere in the book of Timothy, it says, it says, the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear. Timidity, fear, right. The <laughs> but power. of love, the power, and right. sound mind. Right. And something about love and power. That's right. You know, That's right. will make you think right. <laughs> That's right. Love <laughs> right? wins, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. You know, the, the, the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. I was thinking about this today, the kingdom of God is where all the action is. <laughs> it's a power yeah. play, yeah, yeah. It's where yeah. all the action is. Yeah. I mean, 
is where the love is. God is love. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is the place where the hope is, the freedom, grace, and mercy that the world is dying for. And, the, and the, I think you know, we, as a kingdom people walking around, I mean, you talk about not being bored. I mean, we're, there, there's no boredom in the no kingdom boredom. of God. This is, yeah. It's exciting. It's, it's yeah. really fun yeah. and exciting. Yeah. And then, you know, someday our body falls off and we get it for all eternity and t times a million. And this is pretty good. This Wait, is pretty good news. You said, you said that our body falls off. This flesh thing. It, and it's, we just, it's, it's gonna fall off. Let's be honest. And we take off. It's gonna fall off. Mercy. Who cares? You know, we, we, we're here. Let's go for it. Wow. Let's love people wow. as hard as we can in every wow. way we can. And then yeah. the body's gonna fall in. Yeah. Who cares? Because guess yeah. what? I don't think we think very much about heaven, but yeah. we need to spend more time yeah. thinking about heaven because yeah. heaven is going to be unbelievable. I'm talking about the God that made the sunset that we see and the sunrise, the beauty that we're tasting, we're getting like one one millionth of it. It's going to be the perfect temperature with the perfect breeze and the perfect mountains and the perfect golf course and maybe a perfect golf swing. I, I need that. <laughs> perfect steak, no, no with slice. perfect wine, yeah. with, perfect, with wow. no bondage wow. and no problems. Wow. And, no, and so wow. there's nothing to fear. Yeah. So we yeah. have this little time on earth. Let's yeah. go for it. Yeah. And, and so as kingdom people, let's go yeah, yeah. wherever he wants us to go. And it yeah. might be right yeah. in our neighborhood. It's got to be right it with your next door neighbor. Or it could be going to the west side and buying a crazy apartment. I went to Dallas. We bought the worst apartment complex maybe in America mm. called Village Oaks on 30 acres, 488 units. Okay. Police wouldn't go there without four officers and two cars. Mm -hmm. Murders, despair, hopelessness. Right before we closed escrow, there was a police raid with 50 police officers, and my investors are watching on the TV, and I'm going, oh, are they going to do that? Are they going to go they're through not, with it? They're not going to write that yeah, check. Yeah, 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 yeah. They wrote wow. the check, and we, we bought it, and the crime went down 98% because wow. the kingdom of God came in. Came in. And, that, and that, was, that was a SWAT raid. <laughs> that was the SWAT raid. Yeah. As the kingdom yeah. came. Kingdom, yeah. The kingdom comes. Yeah. Spirit, worship, and testimony is a SWAT raid. <laughs> right. Spirit, worship, and, and testimony. testimony. That's Hallelujah. Right. Good. Hey, right? That, did you already know? That's good. Yes. It just came to me. It just came to me, right? Yeah. We're done. The program's over. No, but, 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 you know, when the kingdom Ooh. comes, it's the best. When the kingdom yeah. comes to a life, it changes everything. Yeah. When the kingdom comes to a neighborhood, yeah. it changes everything. When it comes to a city, it changes everything. When it comes to a relationship, yeah. it changes everything. Yeah. The kingdom of God changes everything. Yeah. He puts everything in order. Wow. He, he brings hope. So we see this. So we, 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 when we got to this place in Dallas and there's, it's just despairing and there's hope. There's no tomorrow. There's no future. There's no hope. Is everything is the opposite of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. No order, no, there was not a flower. There's no color. There's no, just, well, guess what? Yeah. The kingdom came. Yeah. Everything changed. Yeah. Crime goes down 98%. People are starting to get along. We had hardcore gangbangers come to our Friday morning men's group called Real yeah. Men, yeah. and they're praying and they're telling their yeah. stories. Yeah. And, they're, and so I've, this, mm -hmm. just being in this line of work that my grandfather had kind of carved out and, mm -hmm. And then same with my work in, in Los Angeles. It's unbelievable to get to be a part of it. It's a gift. I'm so grateful. Wow. And I, I'm so grateful that we get to bring the kingdom to dark places. <laughs> Shine the light. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> wow. The, you know, the name of the show is Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck. But, you know, I'm just, I've already got my sermon for the day. I can, we can shut down the studio and we can <laughs> leave. Um, so I, I, I so I'm kind of stuck here because you've dropped so much on me. I don't know where to back up to, where to start from. But you, 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 you touched on when you received the Lord, and, and something just I, just, I just went past a milestone date for me, a personal milestone date for me. It was, it was uh, J July 7, 1977, when I heard the Lord speak to me, the 7th of July, 7777. Huh. And I heard it very clearly. And as we just went through that, that date, I heard the Lord call me again and says, I still have work for you to do. I still have. Yeah. And Lord says, I still have. Because, you know, you, we can do this thing for, a, a, for some time and then we think, oh, I, I think I've done it. I'm, I'm getting kind of old. I'm kind of tired. And the Lord says, I still have yeah. work for you to do. I still right. have. Um, and so with all that you've done, what does the Lord still have for you to do? Yeah, good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, 
I think something about the kingdom of God is that there's a freshness, mm -hmm. there's a newness yeah. that he brings. Yeah. And I, I've always looked forward to getting old because, and I, I know I'm not talking about the aches and pains, but, I, but I, the, 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 what can come with, with age and wisdom. We were talking off air about suffering, yeah. and I've suffered a fair amount in my life with a daughter yeah. and with some own, my own personal mm -hmm. problems and mm -hmm. bad decisions. And there, there's a richness, mm -hmm. I think, that comes with life as we get older, mm -hmm. that, I, that and a wisdom mercy. And, and a mercy and a grace and a tenderness and a kindness that comes when you've walked some miles. Yeah. So I, yeah. I look forward yeah. to however long yeah. this body is going to keep going. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm looking forward actually to... What are you, like 35? 40, I'm 44. 44. 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 35, 35, 40, 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call me Opie. I had red hair. So they, bright red hair. Yeah. But I'm looking forward to... to I'm looking forward to the, the, the journey continuing mm -hmm. because I think with, with more experience, with more... I, I hope it's just more grace and more love mm -hmm. and more mercy and more mm -hmm. wisdom mm -hmm. that can be then yeah. imparted to kids and grandkids yeah. and other people yeah. and give your life away more and more as you go. That's what I'm looking forward to most. That, that fire is there in you. I, I can I, feel the fire. I can feel it. I, yeah, can feel, I can feel it. I'm burning. I'm like, I'm, I'm fanning. Because <laughs> you have a certain, you, so, so I think in this life sometimes you come across people that have uh, high energy. And some people, and it was all depending on what the energy level is, because you know sometimes you hear, you hear, I hear this a lot. Well, I'm spiritual, and so okay, well, but what spirit? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And then I see people with high energy, and I'm like, oh, well, what energy? You know, and so you can be, it can be negative energy or positive energy. So right. what energy? You know, it's like right. there's two posts on a battery. You know, it's negative and positive. And so you, when when we first rubbed elbow, I thought, oh, this dude is, he's, there's some powerful Jesus energy, he's like, pow, like, pow, and so I'm, I'm, that just, that's, that validates everything that I heard Sister Courtney say about you, you know, this, she said, this is the dude that you have to have on the show, right? Yeah, I need her, I need to spend some time with her. <laughs> she should be your, your, <laughs> your, uh, your, uh, your advertisement That's person, right. you know? Um, but, but, so that, but, but what that really tells me is that she sees it in you, you know? And people have to see the light in you. People have to see the light. And so you have been broadcasting that light. Well, you thank know? you. And people see that. If, if, if we love one another. Mercy. It is yeah. so attractive, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. and I, I just yeah. you know and yeah. I think if there's one thing I'd want for my kids, I just want them to be loving people. Mm. You know, mm. everything else kind yeah. of falls yeah. by the wayside. You know, we, what's the whole goal here? Mm. You know, growing up into Christ likeness, it's yeah. becoming love. It's yeah. becoming loving people. Yeah. Mm. And so you know, whatever, whatever. God does along the way or allows along the way. He allows things sometimes that, like we were talking about earlier, that you kind of can shake your head and go, what is this about? Yeah. It's all on the road to molding into Christ-likeness, which is becoming a loving person. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a beautiful thing. So you have, you have so much going for you. So normally, so I'm trying to back up. I'm trying to, you know, so sometimes when you... Um, when you light a fuse, you can see like tss, the firecracker and shit. Yeah. But as soon as I l as soon as I lit the fuse, it's like boom! It blew up in my face. <laughs> this Sorry. show because I had a whole bunch of stuff I wanted to start off and kind of gradually get to this point, and you kind of blew me. <laughs> it's like a boom! It just kind of blew up at me. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I, can I tell you one story? <laughs> yeah, yeah go, go ahead. It's your show. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to take over here, and then I have some questions for you. <laughs> Cheers. Um, <laughs> Okay, so speaking of, you know, life and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. suffering, and mm -hmm. so we had, we were going to have our second child, mm -hmm. it's January 3rd, 2002, mm -hmm. and I got the call that no parent wants to get from my wife who's getting an ultrasound, there was a problem with the baby. Wow. And so mm -hmm. we had to go have the baby delivered that afternoon, so mm -hmm. I drove back from L.A., and the doctor pulls me aside and says, I just looked at all the ultrasound photos and I don't distinguish a developed brain, mm -hmm. which is not compatible with life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my wife, when I got home, she had the Bible open like this and to Matthew 21, 21, if you mm -hmm. believe, 
you know, you can move a mountain. So we, we held on to that. We claimed it and we believed for that. Mm -hmm. We went in and had the baby delivered. She had a developed brain. She had had a massive stroke, but it was a miraculous thing. So, number one, I think God changed that. So, right. yeah. I'll yeah. testify yeah. to that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And what's even more miraculous to me is she's 17 now, and we went on to have three other, three more kids. She's 17. She's, she still doesn't walk well, and she has lots of challenges. Mm -hmm. She's changed our life, Pastor. Yeah in ways, and I know you can relate to this, yeah. that I, I, you can't believe yeah. in what she's taught us things, and Ooh. she's probably watching right now, so yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's taught us about joy, about love. Yeah. She doesn't, she's never worried about tomorrow. She's never mad yeah. about yesterday. She doesn't hold grudges. She treats every <laughs> single person the same. The checkout person, the waiter, or the President of the United States, she treats them all the same. She's not a respecter of persons in that way. And so this has been a gift in our life, mm -hmm. in our walk in the kingdom of God that started with tears and what is going to happen? How is this going to work? She's with us forever. Is she going to live? Is she not? If she does, is she a vegetable? Is she? And what's happened, Pastor, is it's, it's a gift yeah. that we, we actually wouldn't trade. And Elle Claire with one third of a brain, in essence, has transformed our family, wow. transformed our hearts, She's touched hundreds of other lives. And so it's an example to me of in the kingdom of God, even what sometimes can be the worst or loss yeah. or difficulty, yeah. he can redeem yeah. somehow. Yeah. And you go, how in the world does he do it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. Yeah. but I know he does it. Yeah. He can redeem yeah. the most yeah. difficult, yeah. challenging, yeah. what in the world's going on? And somehow you wake up 15 years later and you go, I wouldn't no. trade it. Thank you, God. The Thank stone you, Dad. that the builders refused. Yes. Is the, <laughs> so I, I want to say that to say, I don't know who's watching, but whatever it is. Tell them. I'll tell them. <laughs> tell them. Well, you know, whether it's a diagnosis yeah. or you're yeah. born with a child that's got autism yeah. or you don't know how you're going to deal with this yeah. or you lose somebody, yeah. trust God. Yeah. Trust God because He can redeem anything. Wow. He's in charge. He's His sovereign Today as he was yesterday, and he'll be the sovereign tomorrow. And when these bodies fall off, we're going to go have a big party. And guess what? Ella Claire doesn't walk yet, says she's 17. She's going to run for trillions of years. Perfectly. So it's kind of good news. We got some good news, brother. <laughs> it, takes a lot a to, it takes a lot to shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. Ooh, glory, 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 glory. If um, if you're watching the show right now, okay. <laughs> we lost them yeah, all. Yeah, the take take a walk and come back and let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me let me touch up my makeup, okay. <laughs> it, it's it's you you are you are truly a blessing to me. You know I uh, I I, I work with 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 uh, people from all over the world and people from all kind of backgrounds and. Um, children, youth, young adults, blind, crippled, crazy, and it's amazing to me, it always happens, is that the unexpected bless me the most. You know, oh. you know I never look for, and I know, I know some very wealthy brothers, I know some guys with, I mean, some people that are very, very wealthy, and, and they're good guys, I love them, but I can't tell you how many times I've been blessed by somebody who had nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. like wow. Yeah. I, I know very intelligent people, you know, very with doctors and masters and you know, triple whatever the you know, the letters kuma luma luma all, <laughs> all those lotties that go behind that, you know, right. and 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 it's 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 amazing how many times a a child will bless me with a word of wisdom or a word yeah. of knowledge or and like oh wait a minute you only that only could have come from the Lord no one yeah. could have put that. Oh, that was that was a Jesus moment. That was a yeah. Lord moment. That's right. And and today is one of those. So, oh, so praise I'm, the Lord. Thank you because you 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 never claim to be a guy with great wealth or great knowledge no. or great expertise. You just you just a guy. Yeah. A dad trying to trying to do the right thing. Yeah. And you know what Ella Claire does for me? She's that person for me. So if I'm struggling, which is 
somewhat regular. She, I'll ask her to pray for me. Ooh. And she'll come over and she'll put her hand on me and she'll pray for me in Spanish. She's, she like speaks Spanish better than English. She's, that, that blows you away. <laughs> yeah, she's fluent. Yeah. So I don't know what she's saying. Right. Wow. But and that's probably knows, better. It's probably, <laughs> it's right. It's yeah. tongues to because me. Because you would try to yeah. rationalize it. Yeah, right. Yeah. But she prays for me. And yeah. I'm telling you what, I think her, I, I know God's listening when she's praying. That, that yeah. pure, that pure heart. The innocence. That pure, Hallelujah. she's pure, she's loving. Wow. And, and, and I think we need to pay attention. You know, sometimes I think we walk around and we're missing so many of those moments with that person. Yeah, yeah. You know, and in special needs, we have a heart for the special needs community, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. And some of these special needs yeah. kids and people, they're mm -hmm. trapped in these bodies that don't work, right? Yeah. Yeah. So whether they're drooling or they can't talk or they're having, they have ultra sensitive hearing shapes, or they're yeah. banging their head against, yeah. the, all that, they're doing that because they're injured, their brain's injured. Yeah. Yeah. But the spirits that, that's down in there, mm -hmm. the spirit goes so much deeper than the cortex and the brain. Yeah. And, and unpacking who they are is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you're wiping away so much of the clutter that yeah. us full-brained yeah. people yeah. deal with, yeah. the worries and the cares. It's like the thorny soil. Yeah. You know, the worries and the cares and all the things that constrict us. And I'm worried about tomorrow. I'm worried about money. And I'm worried about this and that. Or I'm mad about this. Or yeah. I'm mad. Oftentimes with the special needs community, all that's wiped away because they're not thinking about it. Yeah. Ella Claire's not mad at anybody, and she's never been mad at anybody in her life, to my knowledge. Right. It, what would it be like, mm -hmm. you know, that if you strip away, uh, there, she doesn't have an enemy. Yeah. Yeah. You want to talk about learning yeah. about God, there, there's some powerful lessons to learn there, so I don't know. You, you, you brought me to a place, so I, I, you know, I'm a swim coach. I've been around water, pools all my life, and um, one of the groups that I worked with morning, in Inglewood, Morningside High School, we had um, special needs um, middle school, high school, would come in and use the pool for their water therapy. And I remember that and you said that. I would have these groups of children come in, and I remember one child, and this, we were, it's an indoor pool, indoor metal roof, brick stone walls, a lot of echo. My voice would echo. Like speaking right now, you could echo. It would like echo across the campus, just me speaking. Very, And we had one kid that would come in, and he would be very excited, and he would just yell, top of his lungs, and so it would just reverb around her. And this one little girl who never spoke, she never said anything, she, and she's in her chair, and, all, and she, she could not move, and she's in her chair. The kid's in the water. She got out of her chair. She got out of her chair, sat on the side, got into the water, walked across the pool, and at the top of her lungs, she said, shut up. <laughs> and then got back, walked across, got in the pool, and, and then sat, sat back, back in her chair. chair. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all, well, thank goodness. Somebody could tell, because you couldn't really tell the kid to shut up. You right. know? You, we all wanted to tell him to shut up, but we couldn't. But she got out of And she was one of those children who, once again, she just was, yeah. the mind was there, but the body couldn't move. But for that instant, she and, and all, the, all of the teachers and all the instructors, they, you know, they started journaling, you know, this challenge, because it was <laughs> that we had never experienced. And of course, it was new to me because I wasn't, I wasn't really, I'm a swim coach. So right. I didn't, I didn't, you know, that I just opened the pool and the special needs kids would come in. But to watch, to be a, a witness to this interaction was like, oh, that was a miracle for this child to be able to get up out of her chair. And so we never know what provokes a person to do what they have to do yeah. to, so she just wanted some quietness. <laughs> That's all I could see, this person yeah. wanted some quietness and, and right. we were interrupting her quietness and was, it was amazing to me. And, and I, I have some young, uh, my nephews are, are, uh, uh, are artistic and I remember some of the things that they would do and say and it would, it would make me think, wow, they're ahead of the game. Yeah, there's something that there's just going on in that brain. It's just like it's beyond the thinking that I could ever, I could ever achieve. You yeah. know, they knew they would know certain things that I could never even pick up on, vibes or uh, they would they would hear a conversation and you could you, you know they're listening they hear. It's not like they're just they don't hear, and it's amazing how sometimes me I'm educated I got I can move my arms and my limbs and I think I got it all going, but it's amazing how shut down I am. Yeah, we can learn a lot. 
we can learn a lot. It's amazing. And coming across special needs people in Dallas, there was a kid named Pierre who was in a, his mom was in a car accident when he was in the womb and he mm -hmm. couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. um, but he would sprint to my car every day I'd pull up. Wow. And he would, he would mumble, he, and I could tell he wanted to, he wanted to come over to our house. Yeah, you know, and you have a kid over to your house like that. Mm -hmm. So ended up he ended up having a girlfriend at, at the apartments. Mm -hmm. So we invited him for dinner, maybe two weeks before. Mm -hmm. They called my cell phone probably forty times to confirm. <laughs> Went to bed that night after the dinner was over. They had left seven messages maybe text messages, at least seven voicemails, but I think they had called my phone 22 times or something to thank us. Yeah. It was the highlight. Yeah. These folk yeah. hurting people, yeah. the, what, what, the poor, yeah, yeah. but hurting yeah. people of yeah. all kinds. Yeah. We need to be inviting them yes. in. We need to invite them into our homes, yeah. into our lives. Yeah. When you have a party, when you have a banquet, invite the people that can't reciprocate. Right. Right. Because guess what? Right. They're going to love it. Right. You're going to make their year. Right. Good life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so that yeah. I think that yeah. we have a, as kingdom people, we have a special. Yeah. Yeah. I think Jesus cared deeply yeah. about hurting yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. And he went to them yeah. and he invited them in yeah. and he touched them. Yeah. He wasn't afraid of them. Right. And I think that the, that's how I want to be. Oh, you know, right. that's, and it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. Oh. There's, a, there's a story. There's a story in, that, in, the, in the book. Sometimes I refer to it as the book because sometimes you, when we, we deal with some people who are not of faith or they are not, uh, they're not believers, but when you say, if I say the Bible, oh, I don't know about the Bible, but there's something, there, I heard a story in the book. In the book. Uh, it's a bestseller. Yeah, it's a book. <laughs> it's a so bestseller. It's a book. <laughs> I heard it written that there was a, there was a young man who was, who was walking down or, or who was injured on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, a church person walked by and looked at him and kept going. Right. And then a priest walked by and the, the story says that the priest looked them in the eye, went on the other side and walked by. Mm -hmm. And then there was this guy, and I, I always think of him like a biker dude, because he was a man of means, he was a man of support because the, the word said he put him on his beast. And I'm thinking it was, maybe it was, a, it was a Harley, I don't know. <laughs> but, it, but he put him on his beast and he, and he took care of this guy. But I think about sometimes it's, it's it's not so much how much you know or or how religious you are. It's it's do you have do you have the heart of compassion to stop by yeah. and take care of a person's needs, right. meet them where they are. I, I, you can't do nothing for me. Uh, it's, I'm not doing it because you can do something for me, but because I see a need and I know I can meet it. And not only can I meet it, but I can I can pick you up. I can put some bandages on your wounds, make it feel better for a moment, and then I can take you to a place where they can give you more help. And if there's a bill, I'll take care of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I may not have the finances in my pocket, but when I come back, <laughs> I'll take care of that bill. And I think that's really what 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 you're doing. That's what I've tried to do. It's not about. It's not. It's never really been about you or me. It's about how many people can we help. Yeah. Along that road, you know, yeah. and and that's that's powerful yeah. to me, and I I feel that from you. It's it's a, and, and you know that and that the story is a good the story of the Good Samaritan. It's in the it's in the book somewhere. If you want to look up, just find Good Samaritan, um, and I think that's really what what this book has called us to be to be that Good Samaritan on the road of life. Yeah, yeah, and the that's scriptures true. are laced with you know if you, those who are kind to the poor, lending to the Lord. Yeah. You know, what does yeah. it mean to know me? It's, yeah. It talks yeah. about one passage. Yeah. It means caring for yeah. the poor yeah. and the hurting. And I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know, and it's not a legalistic thing. It's an outflow. It's an overflow. Yeah. It's a pouring out. It's a squeezing of the heart. Like it's a, you're, you're, yeah. you're a heart squeezer. We, 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 yeah. And I think I think God in the kingdom. I think God can give us different eyes on, uh, with which to see people mm. <laughs> because mm. it's so easy to see humanly with these human eyes and, and go out and, and it's if there could be a real cynicism. I'm convicted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But right, I think he, right, he give right. us new eyes yeah. to see people. Yeah. 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 Just just like a brain injured person, why do they slobber or why do they because they're injured, they're yeah. hurt, right? Yeah. Well why does that person who's on the street act like the act way they do? Though. They're hurt. They're hurt. They're hurt. Ooh, okay. Okay. So time out. So so I, I so I got you. You just hit me with a bunch of stuff already. So I I, uh, I was I was asked to do a story 
for a friend of mine, Dave Mason, who works for the news press. And you know, I don't know if you notice that you guys know, but I'm, I'm not really the most, I'm a little chocolate here. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, they call me white chocolate in Dallas. They call me white chocolate. I think I was supposed to be black. And I think it was a, there was a pigmental error. I think I was supposed to be black. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's a great show. So, uh, so let me go back. So, when, so back to the start. We just started the program, and when the, when the pro, I always say that this is the this is part one of, of part three. Okay. okay, okay. Good. Good. So, uh, but I'm, I'm Dave Mason, who works for the uh, Santa Barbara News Press. He was interviewing me for for Black History Month, and uh, and he's asking me, and we did a whole walk up and down Straight Street, and we're talking about you know the work that we do for the community, work, 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 and it was great. And then he asked me towards the end of the end of the interview, he says, Chuck, um, what do you see the progress is for um, black Americans after the civil rights movement? And as he, as he asked me this question, this, this very homeless looking, very down and out guy walked by and he used some very vulgar terms to describe me and my, and my, my background. And Dave says, Chuck, aren't you, are, you, are you turning the other cheek? And I says, no, I'm turning the other ear. Because what he was saying, he wasn't calling me those horrible words. What he was really saying was, I'm hurting. Yeah. I need help. I want yeah. someone to notice me. I need love. I need yeah. affection. Yeah. And, and after that, I, and I, you know, once, once somebody goes there with you, you, you kind of always remember that person. And so I made sure that every time I saw this guy, I would always say, hey, bro, how you doing? Hey, brother, mm -hmm. how you doing? And I can't tell you, I, I probably bought this guy lunch or breakfast at least five times since then mm -hmm. because you, you, you can't, if I would have responded in a negative way, then we would have just still been going east and west. We would have right. never made friends. But now, when I, whenever, hey, Brother Chuck, hey, Chuck, how you doing? Hey. Because you have to, you know, it's like, I can't look at your brokenness. If, I look, if, I, if we just focus on people's brokenness, then we're yeah. all broken. That's right. But if you look at why is a person broken, in fact, not even why, but I don't care why you're broken. Right. But I recognize the break. And let me pour some some loving salve on it. That's right. Of some of that Praise bomb Lord. in it. And so yeah, I think we have to always look at each other that way. Because I was I was once lost, mm -hmm. and somebody loved on me. Yeah. You were once lost. Yeah. Somebody yeah. loved on you. And so and here we are today. Yeah. Can sit at a table and talk about that love. Yeah, that's right. And and think about if we think about man, it could have really been easy for us to like I don't like you. You know, you're wearing a blue tie, I'm wearing a red tie. Let's just. Put that's easy. Right. That's right. But, oh, to come together and say, yeah, that's my brother, that's my brother. How many people can we help? That's right. <laughs> you know, that's right. together. How many more people can we help together with a loving heart? And I think about that. And so I'm so grateful that you came on the show. My question is to you, how many people you think we can help together? <laughs> how much time you got? Let's do it. Uh, hey, I'm in. I'm in. I'm that's always amazing. dreaming. I think kingdom dreams. So I, here's, yeah. here's my yeah. philosophy about that. Yeah. I don't think we err on the side of dreaming too small. Mm. I, think, I think we err on the side mm. of not dreaming big, big dreams. Yes. Yes. Because yes. God's a big God yeah. and I think yeah. he... And that doesn't, that, that doesn't mean it's some glamorous thing. Yeah. It just means mm. God can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. God yeah. can do anything. Don't put the limits. Yeah. Let's not limit yeah. them. Yeah. 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 And two guys... Yeah. When people get together, the power of agreement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you, when you, when God's the third strand yeah. in that mix, Two or what, three what, can, what can happen with a marriage? Yeah. What can happen with yeah. a friendship? With God yeah. Yeah. is yeah. Yeah. limitless. Yeah. Is limitless. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's wow. exciting. Speaking of how the kingdom is not boring, there's nothing boring about no. this. No. The, the, no. And that doesn't mean there's not hard days, but it's not right. boring. Yeah. And there's lots yeah. to do, and yeah. it's really yeah. fun. Yeah. There's an old uh, Glenn, uh, James Cleveland song. It probably he probably wrote it in the '70s or '80s. It says something about I've had some, I've had some, uh, I've had some bad days or something, and some sleepless nights. But when he looks around and see how good God has been, he, he says he, he won't complain, and I I won't right. complain. You think about the way this guy wrote those songs. But, I won't complain. And even in the midst of our struggles and our battles, our ups and downs, I won't complain because we see that the Lord is going to take care of us in, in the midst of the struggle. Just don't complain. Just keep moving forward. And yes. I see a non-complainer from you. 
<laughs> well, I complain to my wife a little bit. You know, th this is like a sea, this is like an ocean of grace and mercy that we're swimming in. I, I, mm -hmm. the, the, one of the worst moments of my life when I was really struggling, mm -hmm. I was on the floor in a cabin by myself, wow. and I experienced the mercy of God mm -hmm. in a way that was mind-boggling, mm -hmm. undeserved grace. Mm -hmm. You know, they say grace is getting what you don't deserve, and mercy is not getting what you do deserve. I, I, I had that a flood of mercy, wow. and I remember that moment many times since, yeah. because this, it's unbelievable the grace and mercy of God that we get to walk in, mm -hmm. and when you've tasted it, and you've drank deep, and then you can pour it out for other people, yes. it's an unbelievable yeah. opportunity. Yes. Yeah. And people yeah. are starving, Pastor, yes. for grace and mercy. Yes. They're yes. condemned, yes. they're hopeless. hopeless. Wow. And the kingdom of God's everything the opposite. Yeah. There's yeah. great hope. Yeah. There's stuff to look forward to. Yeah. I mean, not it's not. I mean, the earth is not that great compared to earth, heaven. Right. But I mean, the kingdom comes yeah. here, yeah. and we have unbelievable opportunities and unbelievable gifts every day that we can unpack. Wow. And and it's an amazing opportunity. Wow. You you speak about that 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 first the hope issue, hope, yeah. grace, and mercy. <clears throat> My brother brother, uh, Sergeant Mike McGrew. I know he always watches the show. Sergeant Mike, retired Sergeant, Pastor Mike, my, my comrade in the ministry. I saw his book the other he's day. A, he's, a good, he's a good dude. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep him around, but I'm going to extend <laughs> his contract for another three days. <laughs> he's, a good, he's, he's a good man, good man. And when we were dealing with, we were in the midst of the, of the grieving processes, process of our sons, and we were sitting in on a, on a class uh, up on the hill there with other parents who had lost children adult children and we were sitting there and they were and the other people in the class were they were at awe at us because how we we could see a brighter future we could see something and Mike's a believer he's a he's a he's a he's a Jesus guy you know loves the Lord loves and they were looking at me like how how do you guys how do you guys do it you're not you're not the woe is me you're not living in this darkness and and it boiled down to to hope yeah. We we had hope that our child, you know. I look at my son every day, and I'm like, I know he, I know he's yeah. in a better place. I I know he's not suffering, and it was amazing to me to watch these other parents and how they were stuck in their darkness. Mm -hmm. They were stuck in the in the in the in the in the grieving bereavement process and could not see hope, grace, or yeah. mercy. They yeah. couldn't. They, 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 uh, they apart from God, I don't have a clue. How you do it? I, I just don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't have. I'd any be idea. stuck there too. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's have you ever seen the movie uh, Get Out? It's a. It's a, no. it's a. It's a new movie. It came out last year. But there's a place when the when the young guy in the in the program he falls into this pit of darkness, and all you can see is the light up there, and he's falling in, and the, the cameras, the, the the director did great work. The young man is falling in. You can see him underneath, and you can see the light, and he's just falling. And he's just, and it's just like he's falling in this abyss. Hmm. And it was like a hopeless situation, yeah. and, and he couldn't get out. It's like he's stuck. And I think about that. How there's that's what that's what to me that would be a living hell because he's still alive. Yeah. He can see this. He's not burning, but he's still lost in this darkness. And I'm so grateful that you and me, we are children of the light. Right. <laughs> we're rescued. Yeah, we were rescued. Oh my goodness, that's powerful. Yeah. I, I see the sun rise. Every time I see the sun come up, I'm like, woo! I got one more. Right. That's amazing. Right. I think we were rescued, yeah. and then there's an adventure mm -hmm. on earth, and then my victory. My. Oh. Victory, ultimate victory. That's a pretty wonderful thing. We're rescued from the dominion. Yeah. Yeah. Colossians yeah. 4, yeah. 1, 13 yeah. is my favorite yeah. verse. Before yeah. we were rescued yeah. Yeah. from the dominion of darkness yes. and brought into the kingdom of the yeah. Son yeah. he loves, yes. where there's redemption, yeah. forgiveness yeah. of sins. Yeah. Rescue, yeah. then we have this adventure, yeah. very short time on earth, yeah. very oh. brief. <laughs> And then victory. Yeah, yeah. Not victims, but victory. victors. Yes, victory. yes. And ultimate victory. Yes. So this yeah. is a wonderful thing. Yes. yes. And if you're, and if the that Christian life is moment. not, an, you know, a, a, an adventure, and, and victory, mm -hmm. then I think we're missing something. Wow. And I've, I've, I've been there. Wow. But rescue and adventure, and ultimate victory. Yeah. There's a little passage in that in, in the book 
It's, uh, it's the opening two or three words of the 23rd Psalm, maybe mm -hmm. 23rd, 24th, I don't know which one it is, but it, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley. Mm -hmm. And I think of that, that yea statement. Uh, have you ever been on a roller coaster? Yeah. There's two ways to ride a roller coaster. You can ride it like this, or you can ride it like this. <laughs> and so, I, yay, though I walk through. I'm happy to go through this thing. I'm happy because I love the experience, the joy, the adrenaline rush, the, the thrill of it. This is a thrill ride. Yeah. Life is a thrill ride, right? right. You have to, and you have to enjoy it. You know, is it some quick turns and, and some ups and some downs? Yeah, but it's a thrill ride. And then it goes on, as I walk to the Valley of Shadow, I'll fear no, no evil. evil. Yeah. For you're with me. Fear is Hallelujah. the enemy of the kingdom, yes. Christ, the kingdom yes. Yes. free life. Yes. Yes. I think yes. fear is yes. maybe the biggest yes. enemy. Oh, yeah, hold us back. And I think everybody, 95% yes. yes. of the people that yes. are walking around yes. out there are, are in chains to yes. fear. Yeah, well, when, when I started that book, that back, back to the book, it talks about Timothy. It says, God did not give us a spirit of fear. Right. He didn't give us that. That's what's, right. So if, he's, if the book says he didn't give us that, he didn't give us, so who's giving it to us? That's right. The enemy. And people don't recognize who gives you that. Right. You know? That's right. The enemy will use his fear. Well, give it, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I rebuke that fear. That's right. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm, I'm victorious. I'm That's not a victim. Right. I'm victorious. That's and right. And when you think, when, I think when we, break, when we break down the book enough, because as a theologian, you're a theologian, I'm a theologian, as a preacher, teacher, the book is in black and white, a little bit of red. It's in black and white. And it's our job to add the color and the depth. You know, when you illustrate those, you know, then people can really see it like, oh, oh, it's not just the black and white, blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, it's got some color, it's got some depth, it's got some vibrancy to it. It's not just grays and blacks and whites, but it's some color. And I think that's when people can, because, the, 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 and I don't know if, the, if I can use this term correctly, but the rainbow effect brings us all together. You yeah, know, it just it you got to add the colors in there so you can see that like oh, oh we are in this thing together and there's something about the prism, prism is that the right word prism, yeah, prism. the prism of color yeah, yeah yeah that brings us all together and I'm so grateful for um, that experience uh, to where I've been able to illuminate the book in a, in in Technicolor <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah in Technicolor in 3D you know. Um, with uh, what surround sound, you know, right. and make that book come to life. And once the book comes to life, uh, this is a living Bible. It's, it's a living alive. book. It's a living book. And one thing I, I try to teach is like, I want people to realize the book uh, in in real time. Yeah. Right now, time. Right. Real time. It's, this isn't something that was written third. Yeah, it was written long, but it's, it, it's happening in real time. Right. Every breath I take is real time. Right. It's real time. And then, I don't know if you've ever been in that place. Again, when I was in a tough place, this was, this was breakfast. Yeah. This was more important than wow. food to yeah. me. Yeah. I remember the week where I had to have this. Yeah. I felt it, yeah. this was the nourishment yeah. wow. because it was literally breakfast. Yeah. It was the food. And I think that's a, on, something preach, I want to keep. <laughs> keep I want to have that perspective. Cause this, yeah. this is not just, oh, I think I'll read a little bit. Of, mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. sustenance. Mm -hmm. It's alive. It's, it's, yeah. it's all life, truth. Everything's right here. Right there. It's a it's a living Mercy. book. Mercy. I um, have you written? Oh, so okay. Let me ask. You, have Have you written any books? Do you, have you Do you have a bestseller coming out? Bestseller. I don't have a bestseller. I I, I wrote a book. Yeah. I wrote yeah. I wrote a book about my life. Uh -huh. As you should. About four months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, my readership's up to you know three, three. or four. <laughs> I may give you a copy. So the next time we come on the show, so a couple of months from now, three or four months, <laughs> you have to come back on the show and we, when we highlight you and the book. Because I see, this is just me, and I, I didn't know before you said that. I think I did know. Maybe I read it. But I see multiples coming from you. Oh, well, your, you. Your testimony is so great. It's so powerful. I see multiple. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a prophetic person. I don't prophesy. I don't claim to be a prophet. But I just feel it in my spirit. I'm not saying it's from the Lord. This is just from my gut, my my belly is saying, you have so many volumes of books inside of you for different subjects and topics and illustrations for parenting, for husbanding, for being a hu husbanding. Is that a word? Husbanding. Hus husbanding. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's a new word. I'll make we'll it up. It. Husbanding. Yeah, for being a husband. Um, 
for being a dad, for being a, a, um, uh, an employer and an employee. You have so much stuff well, thank you. in you. I'll receive that in faith. And do it. Thank you. And do it. Yeah, thank do, you. do it. Homework assignment. Thank you. Do it. Do it. I'm a swim coach, so I give my kids, I give my swim team kids homework assignments. They have to tell their parents how much they love them. <laughs> they have to do their age and push-ups. They have to clean their room. That's the first three. Now I got this new one. You got to empty the, the trash in the bathroom and the kitchen, and you have to fold all the clothes that come out of the laundry. <laughs> and the parents love me. I got you. <laughs> they yeah. love me yeah. like, Chuck, can we take you home? You know? <laughs> but I, so I see, I'm pulling this out of you. I want to pull you. this out of you. I want to pull this out of you because I see, you know, the Lord, there's a, something about that, that 23rd, where there's a, your cup runneth over. Yeah. And once it starts spilling on the saucer, you got to do something with that. So I want you to do something with that. Thank you. Pastor. Pull it out. Appreciate it. Pull it out. Right. Thank you. You know they. Have, you can do. In fact, I'll, Sister Courtney will have you come in and do your own show. <laughs> we may just have to do that. Because I didn't. I never expected to do, to do one myself. And so if you don't do anything but do one every six months, every we can call it a special. That'd be fun. Will you come on? I, I'd be honored. I'd love to have. Yeah, you. I could do push-ups and I could I could clean my room while you're doing. Them. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because you be you're great because you have the power, and so I, I want you to I want you to really pray on it and Thank let you. the Lord pull that out of you. Um, I appreciate it. And I don't, man. This is I, I Dean. I, I I would never. You know, I'm not yanking your chain or nothing like that. I'm just saying, you have a story that people need to hear. Thank you. Pull it. Praise the Lord. Pull it. Pull yeah. it. Pull God's it. good. Pull it. Yeah, thank Pull you. Pull it. Yank that thing. Yank it. Yank thank it. Thank you. Um, when I'm an artist, and so I, I, yeah, I, sure I told my are. I told my my mom and and and, and my friends that I had to. This is a painting that I did some time back. This is just a, a friend of mine, a very gracious lady, and she just she was just in a special place, but she just captured my eye, and she was she said I was in prayer when I she was in prayer when when they took the picture, which I didn't know, uh, and then this is a dancer. Uh, and the dancer is just leaping into, he's leaping into his newness. And it's, it, it looks like a woman, but it's really a guy. And the guy is really, he's a dancer, he's a ballet dancer. And he's about, uh, he's, a, he's six foot one. And he's about, the, his foot is about six feet off the ground. So a phenomenal leaper. And I put a moon there, but he's really looking at a hummingbird. Yeah. And so I say that I to it. say, leap. Thank you. Into your next destiny. Thank Leap you. into it. I see great things. Um, you know, you guys have been watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck. Um, I'm so grateful. This is just part one. <laughs> part one with me, with me and Brother Dean. Uh, he's going to come back on and share with us uh, all four volumes of your next four books. Perfect. <laughs> I better get to work. <laughs> you have a homework assignment. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's my prayer, man. You just continue to bless your wife. Bless your family, bless your household, but just your presence. Um, if, if you're watching the show and you just want to write a big check, you, you've seen the, 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 the places, just send the big check out to them. Or you can bless the TV station um, in so many ways. We're just so grateful. You've been watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Patrick Chubb. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being out here. We Appreciate just love it. it. Love it. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you.